So areas between curves are one instance of what happens with multiple curves. They don't have to be between, like in the very first example I showed you this morning, but very frequently they are between. Um, the area is going to be equal to the integral from A to B of one function take away the other, right? Which is the same as like, why are we taking away? It's because you're taking the difference between two areas, right? So I'm going to write it like this. Okay, where it's really important that we name these, right? They can't just be in any random order that you like. You could say where F is the one on top, that one you start with is going to give you the bigger area, and G is the one that's beneath it, right? G is the lower function. Okay, now don't write this because <laughs> I'm consciously not writing it, I prefer you to write this, but the student among you will notice that, remember what we said was if you accidentally get them the wrong way around, if you accidentally get the wrong way around, the only difference will be, uh, it'll be the same number, but it'll be negative. Do you remember that? So some of you will say, hey, I've got a function that takes care of negatives. Why don't I just say this? <laughs> okay, why don't I just say that? And who gives a rip with it? which one's F or G, right? Like, F can be the one on top, it can be the one below, you're just gonna get a positive anyway. Now, I'm deliberately asking you not to write this. Why do you think I'm suggesting against it? It doesn't demonstrate understanding. I've trained you well. Okay, now, if you, are, if you write this, this is the equivalent of saying, I don't know, <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I can't distinguish between these two functions, or I'm too lazy to distinguish between these two functions. It's actually very important that you know which one is which. And I will just quickly, I won't do the example, but I will show you quickly why. Okay? What if the area I wanted you to work out was, well, okay, let's just do something like Now, this. what would the area between these two functions be? What would the area be? That, that bit and that bit. There are going to be two pieces, right? You've got this guy over here. That's between the two curves. And then, yeah, it is. Like, it's between the parabola and the cube function. And then you've got this guy, right? This is also between the two curves, okay? But you can see, for the red one, very Christmassy today, for the red one, okay, the cubic function will be on top. That'll be f. That's the upper function. Whereas for the green one, the parabola will be the one on top. Okay? And actually understanding which one is which, well, that's kind of something we're looking for, right? That you can tell the difference. How would okay? you do that? Um, oh, it's, it's simple. Okay, let's put, some, let's put some imaginary numbers on this, shall we? So let's call that one, why did I put so many negatives on this? Negative two, so negative high. one, and I don't That's know. Not like Jesus. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, what would the area be? Okay. Um, I would say let's call this. Uh, I don't know, what is this? G. Okay. So this is like maybe I don't know. Uh, okay. Fine. <laughs> Seven <laughs> minus x squared is upside down, right? I have no idea what this would be. Um, let's just call it Whoa. x cubed. Plus one x minus no, it's got to be a minus. It's got to have so wiggles in it. You're bounded by the intersection points. Just, okay. yeah, I'm not actually going to solve this, okay? I just need some equations. I just need some equations. So for the first one, which one's on top again? The red area. Which one's on top? It's the cubic, right? So I'm going to say that area. I'll say red area is going to be the integral from negative two to negative one. There are my boundaries. It's the of the Cubic, take away, okay, sorry, uh, take away that guy, right? 7 take away x squared with respect to x. That'll give me the red area. That's it. Yeah, you see, it's the top, take away the bottom, right? What's on top, what's on the bottom? Then to do the green, right? Firstly, the boundaries change. The boundaries are now from negative 1 to 3. And then I switch them around. I say, wait, but now the parabola is the one on top. Right? Actually, I didn't need brackets there. And the cubic is the one beneath. So in that case, is it possible if like, um, an area which is the lowest curve between the two curves is negative, so you would get like a large, big area minus small area, so you could get a positive or area minus Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. I see what you mean. The answer is yes, if they're negative. What? So if, if 
Both of them, one of them was in the middle. Yeah, yeah, because then you need the negative number to be the, the smaller number to be the one at the front. Because watch, right? If I've got, okay, so here's my axis. Here's a graph down here. And that's a terrible graph. Sorry. Take a bit steeper. So and, um, here we go. So this is the area I'm, I'm interested in, right? Okay, watch what happens. Let's call this one F and call this one G. Okay. Which is the one on top? Um, no, G of Here's the area on top. Now, where is that area? Like, how could I shade it? It would be this guy, right? Yeah. That's the area on top. Clearly, that's a smaller area than when I do this guy, right? When I do f of x. Do you agree with that? f of x is going to be the blue dots and the black lines, right? So this number is a bigger negative than this one. But you want it to be bigger, don't you? Because like, say I actually evaluated, say this was negative 1, and say this one would be negative 3 or something like that. But it needs to be bigger so that you get a net total of being positive. Do you so see that? It's always going to be positive. Totally. Yes, that's right. Because the integrals take care of the negatives for you. That's okay. the engineer's part of the thing.